Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This video is on simplified weld analysis. So think back to last lecture when we talked about in-plane and out-of-plane welds. An in-plane weld was one where the loading is such that all components of stress lie in the same plane. When that's the case, we will use the J, or the, the J as the torsional resistance of that weld to the loading. So this here is a little sketch of a typical in-plane weld. Now, what we saw last lecture was how to calculate the detailed properties of the weld, the area, the X-bar and Y-bar, and the torsional resistance J. And that is the most straightforward uh, and uh, consistent way of solving any weld that we might encounter. However, if we have a weld that falls in the category of what we might call a simplified weld, if it looks like one of these welds here, what I call a vertical weld, a snake bite weld, an L weld, a C weld, a box weld, or a circle weld, any of these types of weld can be handled by calculating a simplified procedure rather than filling out the entire table. We can just grab the JU equation from the rightmost column here. You'll see there's a, a formula for the centroid of the weld pattern, and there's a formula for the torsional resistance J. Actually, it's a portion of the torsional resistance JU. In order to turn this into the complete torsional resistance J, we're going to be need to multiply that by 707H. So JU from this table times 0 0.707 times the throat dimension of the weld will give us the approximate torsional resistance of that weld. A common student mistake is to forget to, uh, to just use JU and forget to apply it by 0.707H. Also, this only applies if all welds in the pattern have the same H dimension. This means they're all butt welds, or more commonly, they're all fillet welds with the exact same throat area of the weld. Now you can use the vertical weld for a horizontal as well, weld as well, by just re-identifying what your orientation of your axes are. You can use the, uh, the snake bite weld as a dual horizontal weld, and uh, you can use other orientations of these other welds. The trick is, and the place where students and industry professionals tend to mess this, this up, is not paying careful attention to how the origin is defined for where the X-bar and Y-bar are calculated to these welds. If you're not careful, then when you move your loads to the centroid of the weld pattern, you'll have an error creep in your analysis if you're new, not using the correct X-bar and Y-bar re relative to the way that weld is oriented. Now, I believe it's actually simpler to follow our detailed tabular procedure for all welds because it's a nice general one. However, if we find a vertical single weld or horizontal one, it's pretty obvious where the CG of that pattern falls, and it's much quicker to just apply this formula than to go and fill out a table for that. Same thing's true for the snake bite weld. Maybe it's less true for some of these other welds. However, uh, you students and industry professionals are welcome to use these approximate values whenever they are appropriate, whenever you have a weld that falls in this category. Okay? When we have... Uh, analysis of simplified welds will be done in the exact same way as we saw when we filled out the table. We will calculate our X and Y components of stress for any point in the weld pattern, and then we'll calculate our resultant stress. Typically, this will be the extreme points of the weld, like for the vertical weld, it would be the top and bottom we might need to check. Those should have the same uh, stress, top and bottom, so we just need to check one, and it's valid for both. For the snake bite weld, you'll want to look at the four corners. For the L weld, probably the two extremities of that weld will be critical, although you might have to check the join of the 
two welds as well. For the C weld, your four corners you need to check. For the box weld, the four corners. And for the circle weld, they should all have any point along it should have roughly the same value. Okay? Well, depending on the loading. So next we talked about out-of-plane loads. Out of plane uh, welds can be classified as out of plane when any of the components of stress are oriented out of the plane. In that case, the resistance to torsion will be the I, or the moment of inertia of that weld pattern. It's actually the same as the J in another plane. Okay? Once again, if we have one of these simplified welds, we can use this simplified procedure by carefully calculating what the IU of the weld is and the centroid, and then calculating our I is 0.707H times IU. There's actually a few more uh, a few more welds in the handbook that you can look at. Once again, our weld calculations are the same as we saw at, uh, for when we created the table, because it's still an out-of-plane weld, and it's analyzed the same way. So, that is our procedure for evaluating simplified welds. This lecture is going to have two more sub-lectures. One of them will be on the strength of welds, and the other one will be showing some example uh, weld calculations. So you want to stay tuned for that. Enjoy.